When you close your eyes and think of a wooden roller coaster, what do you see? Maybe you picture some camelback hills like those found on El Toro or the Phoenix. Maybe you envision the swooping drops and winding turns of a GCI Twister. What you probably don't think of is a vertical loop or a splashdown, two elements that could be found on the wooden roller coaster in Roller Coaster Tycoon. For such a classic coaster type, these elements look pretty out of place, but if we know anything about RCT creator Chris Sawyer, it's that he based all of the coasters in the game off of real-world rides. Well, almost all of them. So join us as we take a deep dive into the wooden roller coaster, trying to figure out what exactly inspired these special elements. The vertical loop was added to the wooden roller coaster as part of the Loopy Landscapes expansion pack, and compared to the water splash, is probably the more commonly used track piece of the two. It's also the more well known track piece, as a rather infamous wooden roller coaster with a loop opened the year Loopy Landscapes was released. That ride, of course, was Son of Beast, the first and only wooden coaster to break the 200 foot barrier, and the first and only modern wooden roller coaster to feature a vertical loop. Located at King's Island, the ride had a chaotic and short-lived history. A derailment incident in 2006 led to the removal of the ride's iconic loop, and the ride eventually closed for good in 2009. If you'd like to learn more about Son of Beast, El Toro Ryan made an excellent video showcasing this abomination that I'll link in the description down below. One interesting thing to note is the height difference between the in-game loop and the loop found on Son of Beast. Occurring midway through the ride's layout, the loop on SOB stood 118 feet tall, while the wooden coaster's loop in RCT stands less than half that height at a little over 45 feet. Now onto the real star of the video, the water splash. While a splashdown on a wooden coaster may seem a bit odd, Many real-life steel coasters feature splashdowns, so it's not entirely unheard of on traditional coasters. A splashdown occurs when a coaster's train physically interacts with a body of water, and there are two main types. The first, called a scoop splashdown, occurs when a train fitted with tubes, or scoops, passes over a body of water, causing water to shoot backwards behind the train. A few coasters built by Bolliger and Mabillard feature scoop splashdowns, including the hypercoaster Diamondback, and the dive machines, or vertical drop coasters, Shikra and Griffin. The second type of splashdown is a natural splashdown, which occurs when the ride's track itself submerges underwater, causing the body of the ride vehicle to interact with the body of water. This is the type of splashdown seen on water coasters, although a few traditional coasters feature natural splashdowns, a famous example being Disneyland's Matterhorn bobsleds. There's also a third water-based visual element that could be found on a coaster, a water spout. Here, the coaster's train never physically interacts with the body of water. Mechanical water spouts are used to simulate a coaster's interaction instead. The Orlando area is a hot spot for water spouts. SeaWorld Orlando's Manta and Islands of Adventure's Incredible Hulk coaster both feature one. So we know that the wooden coaster trains in the RCT-1 base game were based off of the classic two-seat coaster car manufactured by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, so let's start there. Did any of PTC's coasters feature a splashdown? As far as I could find, no. PTC plays things pretty straight, or should I say, pretty dry. In fact, almost all wooden roller coasters do, which makes sense as I imagine that wood and water don't mix well when it comes to maintenance. There is one classic Woody that once featured a splashdown, though. Wildcat at Oklahoma's Frontier City. Originally built by National Amusement Device for Fairyland Park in Kansas City, Missouri, the ride was packed up and moved to Frontier City in 1991. Upon its arrival in Oklahoma, Wildcat's layout was heavily modified, with the most notable addition being the aforementioned splashdown into a small lake at the very end of the ride. So is this ride what inspired Chris Sawyer to add the water splash? Probably not, for a few reasons. First off, the water splash in Roller Coaster Tycoon is a different type of splashdown than the one found on Wildcat. In RCT, the wooden coaster track clearly submerges underwater, leading to a natural splashdown where the car's body physically interacts with the water. On Wildcat, the train simply runs through a dry trough built into the lake, while water cannons on either side of the track simulate the train's interaction with the water. 
meaning Wildcat features a water spout. Another reason is the relative obscurity of Wildcat's splashdown. While it's unclear exactly when, the park deactivated the ride's water cannon shortly after its first operating season, meaning Wildcat scarcely operated with this effect. While game designer Chris Sawyer has proven himself to be quite the enthusiast, in the pre-internet age, there's a good chance he was unaware that Wildcat once featured a water spout finale. Finally, it's no secret that Chris Sawyer based many of the in-game rides in the first Roller Coaster Tycoon off of ones found in his home country of the UK, making a coaster from Oklahoma seem pretty unlikely as his source of inspiration for the water splash. With the UK element in mind, I thought it'd be worth looking at the parks that Mr. Sawyer drew inspiration from the most, including a park that's available in the real park scenario list. Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And lo and behold, there's a fairly simple wooden coaster in the scenario that features a water splash, a ride named Vikingar. So let's just head on over to trusty old RCDB to find out its manufacturer and... Hmm, that's weird. Vikingar isn't listed anywhere, which means it's not considered a roller coaster according to the site. What's going on here? Turns out, Vikingar is an interesting take on the wooden shoot-the-shoot -shoot rides that were once popular at early 20th century amusement parks. The shoot-the-shoot -shoot first rose to prominence in the late 1800s thanks to Paul Boynton Sea Lion Park, the first major amusement park to open in Coney Island, New York. The park star attraction was the water chute. Here, a flat-bottomed boat was tugged up a wooden ramp via a cable lift. At the top of the ramp, passengers would board the boat before it careened down the ramp, skipping across the water at the bottom. The water chute was incredibly popular, and inspired the construction of many large water chutes at parks the world over, including the UK. Wicksteed Park in Kettering built an adorable small-scale water chute in 1926 that still operates today, and it even comes with a hype man. Vikingar was originally just named Water Chute, although it behaves very unlike these early water chutes. Instead of a one-way chute with a cable tug, Vikingar is a full-circuit water chute complete with a lift hill and a ground-level station. This type of ride, named a circular water chute, was invented by the German showman Hugo Haas back in 1927. While not as popular as Paul Boynton's original water chute, they saw a lot of success in the UK, where a number of circular water chutes were installed throughout the 1900s. In fact, any of these rides could have been Chris Sawyer's source of inspiration for the water splash element. But why didn't he just create a separate in-game water ride to feature this element? Why put it on the wooden roller coaster? Well, RCDB is not the ultimate authority on what could be defined as a coaster. Vikingar is a station, lift hill, and a gravity-powered drop. It rolls, and it certainly coasts. Being a side-friction water coaster, it's certainly an unconventional ride, but a coaster nonetheless. So while the water splash would have probably been more at home on the side-friction or reverser coaster, it doesn't look too out of place on the wooden coaster if you shorten the train. Sadly, Vikingar closed in 2003 and was dismantled in 2006, and with the closure of the real water chute in North Wales in 2007, the circular water chute is no more. The closest surviving example of this ride is probably the boat chute at Lake Winnipesaukee, although Lake Winnie chute more closely resembles a traditional log flume than a roller coaster. While older wooden water chutes are no more, having been replaced by modern high-capacity steel variations, I'm glad their legacy can live on through Roller Coaster Tycoon. Have you had the chance to ride a circular water chute in real life? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and be sure to give this video a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. As always, thanks for watching.